And here we go. Good evening. Good evening. night finish I, I watched through all of invincible and yeah that was pretty good by the way what you drinking um sprecker brand orange dream soda yeah i like me some uh uh you know bottled retro soda they're at my local Albertsons, uh, they got, uh, they actually get supplies of that stuff from, like, a company that does the retro sodas. <laughs> like, I remember having triple cola. Drink for vim and vigor. <laughs> yeah, it's... This one is kind of branded more as like a craft soda or whatever, but like, yeah, there is kind of like that same idea of like, you know, there, there, there is something to have in, you know, that specialty bottled soda that's nice. A nice glass bottle with oh, there's something classy about it. Yeah. There, there is this, uh, this one, uh, novelty store that's, uh, in town. A little bit of a fair drive away. They do have like some like you know old style like you know sodas and candies and other novelties that are kind of pretty neat to take a look at. So, some some of them are obviously like gag gifts. Like there's like there's one that I, I figure I'll just have to try one of these days because I'm so freaking curious. It's like a it, it's it is a ranch dressing flavored soda. I think I've seen a picture of that, and I it's one of those things where it's like, I know it's a gag gift, but you know somebody wants to try it. Yeah. But then, um, yeah, there is also, um... Like some, you know, they, they got like a fair few varieties of like, you know, different kinds of root beers and cream sodas and other. I think you know what you're going to need to do if you want to get in there, right? I do not. Well, what's something that Mumbo can do for you? Turn me into a thing, oh. Uh, are you starting to understand? Yes. Glad I could help. Because I admit, if I were a kid, I probably wouldn't have gotten that. Like, it looks obvious, but I understand why people would overlook it. That's the problem with some collect-a-thon games. Sometimes the answer is, it seems obvious, but it's not. It, you, uh, you, you know that, right? Mm -hmm. but yeah, have you seen Invincible? No. Yeah, it, it was good. Though, I would say, as far as the brutality is concerned, I kind of rank it up in the same way I look at Primal. It's gory and violent, and yet it's done so well, like, don't mind. That is, J.K. Simmons brings in a really good performance. Hmm. So now I want to see Omni-Man try to catch Spider-Man. You know, he's got to take pictures for, for the newspaper. <laughs> I haven't really seen it myself. Mostly, I'm just kind of familiar with the memes. Yeah, that show really mean that. Got mean Alan Beck. <laughs> yeah, 
in the death battle between him and Homelander from Amazon's The Boys was pretty good. So it is kind of funny how Amazon has two shows that about superheroes. He's ultra violent as a superhero, as a Superman XP. Uh, yeah. Hmm. It's kind of funny how that works. It's a funny thing, I haven't actually paid attention to any too much superhero stuff in a while. Yeah. Hell of a place to nap, Mumbo. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of weird just seeing him be there. Yeah, freaking. Hello! Ghost and hello! Oh. <laughs> so I was just talking to my mom and yeah. She's moving to a new place, which is actually right nearby, so. Are you gonna live with her instead of your crazy nan? Huh? Are you gonna live with her instead of your crazy nan? Nah, nah. She's living in a small apartment. Yeah, and I mean, I guess that's fair. I mean, do you really wanna have. I mean, if you're one around, I think your man might burn the place down. <laughs> By the way, you might want to pound that switch. Okay. Yeah, you pound that switch. I mean, what, what would you call that? The ground pound? Hey. Right. I mean, it, it, yeah, I mean, but the thing is, it's like, it, it, it's both a butt stomp and a beak stomp. Yeah. I just call it the ground pound. Yeah. I mean, that's accurate. But it's not as funny when you actually, you know. I think that's everything you can do here. Hmm. This is area is just there to get help you get to the next area. Alright. Let's just steal all the egg. Egg. The egg in this drying tub. <laughs> you will give me an egg. Oh my god, pump it again, get out. Good place to keep a switch though. I mean, they are very portable. Now, what I want to know is... How the hell did Mumbo get in here? I mean, he's got transformation magic. Yeah, but he's never shown that he could turn himself in anything. Just other people. I mean, you know, it's... A, a funny little uh, thing I just kind of realized. It's like, you know, the whole Gruntilda's whole plan is that she wants to basically be made uh, beautiful and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And one of your major allies is a shaman that can do transformation magic. It's like, it's like, hey, Gruntilda, you don't need to kidnap people and drain their beauty from them. Just work with uh, Mumbo and actually try and come up with a transformation spell. Well, I guess the idea actually, is that I maybe mean, because his his spells seem to have like a range limit, maybe it's true. not like a permanent yeah. thing and she would want to always be beautiful. There are two things about that. One, it is uh, a Wumba... In the second game, Mumba does imply that Mumbo kind of is half-assing it. Like, I think she's, like, you know, a failure. But, like, he failed his schooling. And two, Mumbo's skull was cursed by Gruntilda. So I feel like, even if she did go to him, I don't think he's gonna help. Uh, 
I may be a real witch, but that Mambo's a real son of a bit. <laughs> okay, what else? Is we made we made water rise somewhere. I'm just trying to remember how. Yeah, I've only gotten to this point once. So I hate to say it, but you might be on your own. Well, I'm I'm, I'm sure I'll figure it out. Yeah, it's like it's not too hard to figure out. Yeah, no. Mostly just gotta kind of backtrack a bit. <laughs> It, it, it is just kind of a little bit confusing, kind of figuring out where everything is. Like, I'll say this. Uh, Gruntilda's lair is very varied and interesting, but it's a bit less, um... I'd say a bit less intuitive than, say, Peach's Castle, where it kind of felt like it was much more complex. Mm. Well, no, I never had a problem. Then again, that's just me. I'd say Banjo 2 was easier to navigate, but didn't have the personality of Gruntilda's game. What are you not doing? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, went and got a, uh, a chocolate chip uh, cookie, a Bicky. And, um, you know, my nan saw me putting the the... Uh, cart back, uh, you know, the carton back away, and she's like, you know, you can have one if you want. I'm sitting there with one in my mouth. I'm like, what do you think I'm doing? Your nan truly would burn the place down if you weren't around. Hmm. And, and knowing your nan, she, you would just come home, the whole place is in ashes, you're just gonna be in the middle on the couch that has somehow survived trying to figure out why the TV isn't working. I hate that that's accurate. Yeah, I know, right? I don't even know your nan outside of the stories and yet I call it it. I, I'm, I'm just imagining you come home one day to, there's just a crater and she's wandering around in it and it's like, what happened? I can't find the Tim Tams. Yeah. That's all so accurate. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> I, I, yeah, this is why I don't hate your nan. I, I'm more concerned about her, if anything. <laughs> It's just a lovable dumb broad at this point with uh, possibly dementia. Okay, th yeah, there was. Th Wait. How the hell does that work? Let's. I, 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 I gotta process this? Okay. Yeah, uh, how? Da, 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 da. Yeah, like. What? I, like. I, I I get it, like, the water level is raised in here, but it's like, I, I guess the idea is that there's an interstitial area where it goes down or something. That, that, that's weird. I know, but it's so... What? I, yeah, this, this is, uh... So, maybe if you go down into that pipe, there's a switch or you can go to? I don't know. Yeah. Just 
stay away from that goddamn mine. I I don't like those mines. You gotta deal with that freaking Yeah. Hey. There logo. Huh. There's That's actually kind of surprising. Huh. Ah, so that does hide a thing. Okay. Guess I'll need it for later. Again, I love, I love that, you know, this game does sort of give you those sort of things where it's like, oh, look at that, there's a crate over here, and there's a, uh, a place that you can stand to get in line with it, and there are some eggs nearby. It, it's showing you what to do without directly pointing it out. And how Tarted has joined the chat room, and apparently this is one of his favorite games. Why, hello. Hello, Mr. Cowtarted. Hey, at least. Banjo. I will always have a place in my heart for Banjo Kazooie and Tooie. They were. They were childhood platformers. I do still say that Tooie's more my favorite, but I think that's more on the grounds of. I actually knew how to. I actually could beat it. Mm. Mm. Like, I would say uh, Kazooie has lots and lots of charm. It's definitely one of the best. Chewie uh, is kind of a step back. They went too large with it. And, yeah. um, too much backtracking in the... I can see you. Yeah. I agree. Like, it's still a good game, but just... No, I'm with you on that one. Banjo Tooie is definitely easier to play and beat. But it felt more stretched. Kazooie does have plenty of problems. The goddamn The note issue. That like Well that's only for the N64 version. Like if they did not Yeah, I remember, this is what we're playing, but yeah. That note issue. Yeah, because like, I played them both again, um, on, uh, Xbox Live. And, like, the, the Xbox, uh, the HD remasters are the definitive edition. Oh, yeah. It's the, it's the Switch's N64, uh, you know, games. The, yeah, the, uh... Nintendo Online Entertainment System, or they call it. Okay, how do you keep going? Hmm. So I guess technically it is uh, emulator. Yeah, it's just is official emulator. emulator. Yeah. Yeah. Not the bees! Not the bees! Why would you do that? Okay, so that's a destructible grate. Okay. A grate. Yeah. A destructible crate. Great. Rusty yeah, Bucket great. Bay. Yeah. I'll say this, I've kind of, while I do feel like I do kind of have to give the game a little bit of a, um, uh, a feeling of, um, 
you know, you kind of have to bear in mind what kind of era it was when 3D gaming was still kind of getting developed. It is pretty fun. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. And as far as the N64 collectathon games, I'd say Banjo Kazooie is one of the best. It's probably the best out of. If you had to fight, you know, with representatives of Super Mario 64, Congress Best. That's not a collectathon. I wouldn't really. I, I guess. It, I guess that kind of depends on, like, I mean, you could say the stars are collectibles within the levels, though it's not always exactly clear. Yeah. Most people cite uh, Mario 64 as well. Yeah. I mean, because there, I mean, sure, it's not as much a collectathon, and that, you know, like, oh, there's not as many things to collect. It, it, it beats the it, it meets the bare minimum. And yeah. To be honest, Magic Kazooie will always be compared. Any platformer will be compared to Mario. Yeah, because like when it comes to Mario 64, it's like I mean, there's you know getting the stars, and kind of subordinate to that, there's the whole oh you collect a hundred coins or the, collect the five red coins, whatever type of thing. I'd say, like, it's it, it's technically a collect-a-thon, but it's not as much as an emphasis compared to how it is in this game. Yeah. But, and then for other ones to compare, well, there'd be Conker's Bad Fur Day, which is... Alright. And of course, Donkey Kong's 64. Mm. Which, while I think is bigger, I think they put way too much collectible. Yeah, because eight, there's five characters, each have a set of their own collectibles which appear in everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It was. That's why I think Banjo Kazooie and Tui kinda have the right. You know, the right level. You know, they're big and they're. Yeah, and also that. Call that a bridge? Guess it slides out more. I think I wanna say yes. It's been a while. Um, let's see. Uh Diddy Kong Racing was fun too. Oh heck yeah. Yeah. I was a Mario Kart 64 kid, but yeah. Also, I think you can break those windows, like if you ground pound them, if you get on over them. Yeah, I, I prefer Diddy Kong over Mario Kart 64 because one, you had different vehicles, uh, the graphics were better, and uh, the way the vehicles hand handled were a lot better. Mario 64 really only had the fact that it was a Mario Kart game going for it. Yeah, no, no, I get it, I get it. I, I would say for what it is, Mario Kart 64 is pretty good, but yeah, ba Banjo, uh, no, not Banjo, Diddy, Diddy Kong, Kong Racing, like, it's got so much more variety, it's got that graphical charm, like, I find it kind of funny to... Like, I remember hearing the thing of, like, oh, you know, part of the reason they did pre-rendered sprites for uh, Mario 64 was because when they tried to make them all, the, them all like, actual 3D polygonal models, apparently it was too much to handle. But I guess Diddy, the, the, guy, the guys at Rare just really knew how to really make the, the, the hardware work. Yeah. Rare was the N64's best third party. Yeah. Yeah, it will always forever be one of those things like Nintendo. Why did you let them go? Well, look at the bright side. The first game that Rare had to put out uh, was grabbed by the Ghoulies, which uh, 
I don't think the Microsoft executives were happy to get that one. <laughs> there is, like, the rare that we have nowadays is not even the same team anymore. Yeah, like, pretty I much know. all of those people went off to do other things. Like, what wasn't, um... I believe it was called Time Splitters. Was it a shooter that had some X Rare staff on it? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah. That sounds right, I think. But, I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm tired of that thing. And it's like, and then I think there were some other staff who, like, went off to do, like, they made the the, the team that made the ukulele. Yeah. Yeah. And ukulele. It was all right, but definitely wasn't bringing back the collective bonds. No, I think um, uh, Hat and Time probably did a better job. Oh, definitely. I think I remember. I I heard someone say that um, from what they'd seen of how people reacted to it, you were more likely to like ukulele if you had not played banjo before. Hmm. Which, That's a good way to look at it. Which is kind of ironic, also, because ukulele feels like it's trying the most to try to crib off of the, the banjo style, at least from what I saw. Yeah. Another big factor for both ukulele and Hat and Time, and why they kind of, I feel, fell to the wayside, uh, and that is because Odyssey came out, and Odyssey is a masterpiece. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I haven't even played it, and I know how good it is. Yeah, like, man, it's, because, like, it, like, I feel like it really does fill out that sense of kind of what you, I suppose, what you might call the collectathon, with how it's just like, man, when, when you start playing that game, and you start getting those moons, it's like, you just, it's like eating a potato chip, you just go one after another after another, it's like, oh, you could just play it for hours on end. Yeah. Again, another game I really should get around to getting eventually. Yeah. Oh, I need to get Pokemon Legend Arceus too. <laughs> I I played through the entirety of Mario Odyssey with Mario wearing a wedding dress and heels. That is very much on brand for you, Argo. <laughs> and I know for a fact there's a speedrun category of. I can't remember what it's called, but it's basically how fast do you get Nipple Mario percent. in his underwear? <laughs> yeah. I think that's my favorite speedrun category. The silly speedruns. The ones that well it almost feels like average Joes like us could actually accomplish. And it's like uh, it, it's a nice silly fun thing like that. Especially when you have stuff like uh Oh, one of the ones I really like is from Breath of the Wild is Pet the Dog Percent. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Shit like this is what I like. Um, there was another Pet the Dog Percent. I think it was for, um... Ah, oh, that's right. It's for, uh, King's Quest. Uh, I think it was King's Quest 3. Yeah, it was one of those ones. Yeah, I think it's also the same as King Quest that the speedrun will take 20 minutes minimum. Yeah, just because you've got that weight. Exactly. Yeah, this is my... Like, this, I think, is the worst... Stay the worst world in this game. Yeah. Well, no, I would say the last one, and that's because of one working, one of the major mechanics in there, which I'm not going to spoil. Wait, I, I was treading water. How did I drown? Because uh, she said, even when you're treading water, you're still, uh... When you're treading water, you lose air as fast as you would underwater. When you're underwater, you lose air twice as fast. I yeah. call bullshit. It's yeah. because, you know, you've got, you just... I mean, the water is so filthy and oily that you basically exhausting yourself and, like, buddy, inhaling all those fumes. Okay, I guess that makes more sense. 
<laughs> it's still frustrating. Like, the first time you realize, uh... Yeah. It's, it's, it's game logic, we have to run into it sooner or later. It's like, it's like how, yeah! It doesn't make sense that you can hop from platform to platform on a river of lava because convection should just kill you, but we roll with it anyway. <laughs> you know, there is one game that actually takes itself seriously on that one. Like the point and click adventure game, like the Tyrandia. Where the, main, the character's like, well, it seems pretty hot in there, but I, I think I can handle it. Goes forward near the lava, like, ah, I'm frying! And that's how you die. <laughs> then, you know, all this talk of King's Quest, and of course, you bringing up that, like, one of my early gaming memories was uh, watching my dad play, um, King's Quest. I can't remember which one it is. All I remember it's like he ends up on a an island and there's a part where there's like a maze with a minotaur. Oh, that's, that's the... the... It, it, it has the, 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 the sun, the prince, the green isles. Yeah. That, that awesome song, Princess of the Tower. I want to say it's six? I haven't played it myself, but I've seen a couple yeah, of Let's Plays of it. Yeah, I think it's six, because five is the one that JonTron reviewed, and that's on with Cedric the Owl, who says, tells you to watch it for a poisonous snake. No, no, yeah. this one is the sequel of the sun. I think it's Go Air Go. Today, Gone Tomorrow. Yeah. That sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. And it's also one that the that Steam Train did a review on. It was actually one of the earliest. There is a lot of charm in point and click games, and it's like just thinking about it, it's like, yeah, I've got to play through the King's Quest games. I play a little walkthrough because, remember, the games, they may be charming as hell, but remember how brutal it's, it is. It's where the, the term, uh, what is it, moon logic was, uh... Yeah. Actually, I think that was more, um, uh, the, um, Discworld game. Yeah, I'm gonna look that up. I'm gonna look up the Moon Logic trope. Moon Logic puzzle. Hmm. Wonder who is the trope maker. From what I understand, um, King's Quest is somewhat decent, though it does kind of fall into that from time to time, but. From what I understand, a lot of that stuff kind of came about as like a consequence of when point-and-click adventures were a lot more prominent. The just the weird logic was something that became an unfortunate uh, aspect of a lot of designs because it's easier to just make up some bullshit and stop trying to do something everyone could understand. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I'm looking at one of the moon logic puzzles. Yeah, well, there's actually a puzzle in the sixth game where you have to do the make rain spell, where you combine three different things with a teapot. There's no teapot in the game, but you really can't, and not even mention to give it something with the old hunter's lamp. It's a bit like a teapot. Now, here's the problem. In King's Quest 3, you... All spells had to be cast exactly to the instructions. It also double copy protection. So if you were a veteran, you actually might not do that because you would remember what happened if you screwed that up. That is either really clever or a dick move. <laughs> Probably both, if we're being honest. Uh, 
I feel like that's stuff that probably would have gotten in, in my way if I tried playing those types of games as a, as a kid. Oh, definitely. So if I'm being honest, the speedrunning history of a lot of these point-and-click adventure games is really fascinating, actually. Because... Yeah. How, because the speedrun... Yeah, it's not just... Oh, get, solve the solutions quickly. You also have to do it while figuring out how to overclock your PC. Because remember, these are old school games, and remember what happens if you're playing old school DOS on a modern system. Yeah. And I know I've also heard that there's some other aspects that, like, of course there's... There's the bane of every speedrunner, which is the whole, oh, this thing will randomly happen. <laughs> oh, yeah. RNG stuff, yeah. I... I am of the opinion that RNG is healthy for speedruns, as long as it's not too over the top. And it's not, like, 20... Like, uh, if it's a long speedrun game, and then RNG is like, are you fucking kidding me, right? Yeah. Like, the crazy people who speedrun, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, that PlayStation Yu-Gi-Oh! game. Ugh. What is in this shipping crate? You know, I may not be as big a fan of speedrunners, but and speedrunning in general, but for niche speedruns or ones where the game is not obviously a speedrunnable game, that's a lot more fascinating to me. I don't like, like TNT boxes with evil fangy smiles. So, here's my question. Is the box itself the monster, or is the TNT itself also a monster? Like, does it else, does the little TNT have little eyes? If you separate them, do they move? You know what, let's just blow them up and not question them. The sentience in this. Yeah. 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 Why must the oh god of course they explode on contact. And... <laughs> yeah, I'm not as interested uh... in speed runs for a conventional game. Because, well, it's obvious how you do that, right? It's... Yeah, but there's also, like, you know, the tricks and the skill. Like... Maybe first I'm not that big a fan of platformers. Maybe that's it. You... You you prefer the weird exploits in that instead of just the straight up... Oh, this, this uh, particular trick is not an exploit. This is just straight up... Uh, pure talent and skill to get past. I guess, yeah, I'm more of an exploiter kind of guy. That does make sense. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely like the spiffing Brit in the kind of mindset <laughs> of, if I have an option that will let me basically turn the game into my bitch, I'm going to take it. But you, you seem like you're the kind of guy who prefers... I like know, both. Your, yeah. Nah. You like both, huh? I... The... The things that I don't like in speedruns are... When they just, like, completely... Just destroy the point of speedrunning. Like, I do not accept the, uh... The Ocarina of Time... Uh, any percent because it's like yep i'm just gonna do a glitch here uh and that's it i've i've beaten the game in five minutes for doing this weird glitch in this one spot i like, will agree that 
doing it. You're technically speedrunning it, but it's kind of going against the spirit. Like, that's yeah. kind of a thing of, like... Because, there, yeah, there really is kind of the two different ways to, to be appreciating that, which is that, um... When it comes to, like, that exploit thing, it's like... Okay, it's interesting to see that there's all these holes and glitches and stuff that were left in that you can use. Oh, yeah. But it's like, on the other hand, if, like... If you want to do something like, oh, I, I want to be able to play this game good and I want to see someone play this game really good, there's something that is much more easy and more visceral to appreciate in just a very skill-based play. That is interesting to see. Like, I remember um, when uh, I, I eventually got around to looking at a... Uh, a speed run of Mega Man X4. And I realized, oh, you can do this neat little trick where you can jump and dash at the same time and it makes maneuvering around things a lot easier. And it's like, ooh, that is super cool. I, I, I like that. Um, and I, I think about other things at the same time, though, like, I remember when, um, when, like, I, I mean, I guess this is not quite a speedrunning thing, but it's still like a, oh, discovering things in games thing. I remember when wave dashing was found to be a thing in Super Smash Bros. Melee, and it's like, okay, if I, all I gotta do is just sit back and watch as that gets done by, between pros, it's like, okay, that's kind of neat. But if I actually just want to go and, like, play Melee and I have to deal with my friend who's learned how to do wave dashing, and it's like... Man, this just isn't even fun anymore. Yeah. It's cool to know about him, but when it's abused, it does... Hi. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. So, uh, I think... I think my favorite type of speedruns and the ones I look forward to every, um, every GDQ and, um, uh, GDQ and ESA is, um, the long RPG stuff, like the Final Fantasies and that, because it's like, sure, they, like, they usually, like, what, five, six, sometimes even seven hours, but, and, like, the tricks... Uh, usually it's like maybe there's a big skip that can, uh, like, uh, bypass a chunk of, of the game. But it really comes down to, uh, battle knowledge. It's like, yeah, as long as I have this, this amount of stat points and I have this many throwable items, I can usually take this boss out in, like, you know, five to six of those thrown items. It's really... Go ahead. That kind of shit is awesome. Yeah. That's the kind of speed running and tactics I do like because it's less about being with the dexterity and being able to time everything well. It's more. It's game knowledge. knowledge. Yeah. And, and also a bit of exploiting, especially with the older ones where you. Yeah, yeah, mess with the programming, level skip, or sequence break, and do that other cool shit. But yeah, the the thing that really also sets them apart is that it's because they they are on for such a long time. Uh, the people that run those games tend to have gotten really comfortable with just entertaining the audience. So like, it's very like the best way to say it it's a very comfy stream where they're just like they're just chatting they're like maybe they're talking about like how they've discovered uh certain tricks or like or the history like of the game explaining how to actually do the trick and <laughs> yeah like they're inspiring new runners so. yeah and yeah it may not be my cup of tea to watch, but I respect the hell what those guys do. And it's like, either way, when it comes down to it for so many of those things, you know that's the sort of thing that requires so much patience and dedication and just a willingness to sit down to something for hours 
on end to make sure you can pull it off right. It's like, oh yeah, and in front of an audience, no less. Yeah, it's like, especially if it's like they're doing a thing where you know they're they're trying to make it as short as possible, and like, I mean, I, I think it's one thing if it's like in front of an audience in a show, and like, oh, you don't do it as quickly as you can. All right, that's fine. We, you know, you're 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 just having fun. You're showing your skill. But it's like when you run into that situation where like um like where they're actually in it and they're trying to get it down as as you know as good as they can and you run into a situation where it's like okay they're eight hours into a thing and they're almost there and they just gotta do this one thing to uh continue on and get a good chance at a decent run and it's like and they miss it and it's like well, I'm not going to be able to do any better at this point. I guess I'll just have to reset and do those past eight hours all over again perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. I. That's one of the reasons why I can't do... I, I could never do speedrunning. Because I don't think my... I have the emotional sense to pull that off. <laughs> well, it's, I, I guess that's kind of the thing. You'd, you'd either have to, like, put in that kind of dedication or... You'll just have to do something like, um, like what Jaden Animations did and just like, just do a speed run on something no one has ever done before. It doesn't matter how slow you are because you'll be the world record no matter what. Oh, and I freaking love her for it. Yeah. I, uh, the, but I know it will never work out. One of my, one of my favorite, um, like, going talking about like Final Fantasy speedrunning like my favorite was um I think it was uh two years ago it was uh Final Fantasy 8 and um during that uh during the sequence where um you're you know you have to rescue uh Renoa from space oh god yeah um Basically, the runner and the uh, couch commentators just started to actually sing, um, frickin' uh, Eyes on You. Hmm. Nice. Oh, oh, delightful. For the Final Fantasy VI speedrun, like about three or four years ago, um, they actually had, like, during the opera scene, the uh, the runner and crew actually got up and performed the uh, the song. <laughs> nice. I wonder if people think they did the Undertale one and they got the Mega scene. They have to do the, that opera scene too. It, this is the one thing that like I have not seen an Undertale speedrun when it was big. And they were doing a bunch, like, when they were first doing, like, Undertale speedruns and whatnot, and there was, like, the big, sort of, end of stream, uh, end of marathon run. I did not watch it, because back then, that was when I was like, Undertale sucks. I'm not gonna watch this. <laughs> you know, I was there where I was like, eh, yeah, I keep hearing about Undertale this, and feel like that, I'm like, it can't be as good as it really is, but... It's one of the few times where, yeah, it lives up to the hype. Yeah. Or at least comes close to it. I, I do, I do prefer Deltarune, but. Oh uh, no, yeah, I honestly, I'm waiting move to forward a bit. Prep the episode to come before I actually start playing it. I want it because if I play the second one, I'm gonna be really sad. Yeah, I can't play third episode. Hello, Meowxa the White. Meow X yes. White, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ugh, but yeah. I freaking love Jaden Animation for her doing that with the runs with the animation. All the Pokemon stories, too. It, it looks like it's something that you could, you know, get eggs to go down for a puzzle or something. 
I it's been a while since I played this, so I can't even yeah. remember. Yeah, like because like you know they they give you just a random hole, and it's like, huh, I should probably put an egg in that hole. Yeah, the game does. Uh, that, that's what this game is sort of training in. Dude. Yeah. I almost feel like you could break those porthole windows though. Like you could like uh, air pack Rat -a -tat -tat. them. Rat-a-tat-tat. Yeah. Like, it they... feels like something you should be able to break. I mean, you can break it, but... Oh, oh I can jump into it. Okay. Yeah, I, just, I, I, like, uh... I like to say thank you very much for pointing out these things I should be able to interact with that I don't think to because I just don't think to. See, I, I could have told you that, that I'm, I'm of the mindset of like, let you figure this stuff out on your own, but... It is kind of frustrating seeing you do stuff that. <laughs> yeah, in my defense, I didn't. I didn't know if I was remembering or not. I was just like, I'm tired. I was looking at that thing and like, it looks kind of like it. It doesn't look like it's painted on. So. Yeah, I mean that. That is one thing that it does teach you with the windows that you can break. Yes. I, like I, I really did think though that that was just part of the scenery. Like it. Yeah, it really I, does. Yeah. But like I do think this is kind of one thing that hasn't quite aged as well is that I don't think they quite convey things you can interact with as well as they could. They they do because the things that you can interact with uh, aren't just painted on textures. Yes. <sighs> It's for me. I think. I think the reason that I noticed that is it's like a lot of cartoons, like the old Looney Tunes cartoons and whatnot. You could always tell when they were about to like interact with a certain item on screen. Yeah, because it's like, oh yes, that you can clearly tell the the sort of the painted background compared to the cell that they. Have drawn in. And, and that does make sense for this era of games where it's like, y you really have to be economical with what you use. Yeah. And oh, you can go down. Okay. Yeah, it's. Like, I would say, though, that, um, like, compared to, like, Mad Monster Mansion, where it's like, I, mean, I guess the idea is that, oh, you see a lit window and you know to break it because all the other ones are broken. I, I, I just did not think to do that. Yeah. Uh. be another Pokemon adventure. Uh. Yeah. I know I have a big crush on her, but even I know, even if she did like me, yeah, she could do better. She could do way better. <laughs> Uh, you can blame me. She's a gamer, she's cute, and she's an animal lover. Now that, that is an important trait for any woman. Okay, Bran, this is this is not a uh, this is not a a Jaden simp stream. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm kidding. Uh, have you seen that bird? That is. I, I, uh, I want, I want a little parakeet, but I know for a fact I could not take care of one. Well, of course, of, uh, 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 of course we've, we, we've seen it, Brand. Didn't you know everyone has heard about the bird? <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'll, I'll be here all week. Uh, no, you won't. Your, your stream's about to end in six minutes. You can't tell me what to do! Oh, you're right. Five minutes. You're not my real dad. You're not even my fake dad. <laughs> okay, now that's a good line. <laughs> but, uh, I gotta use that one. Although, I do... I was just watching uh, Ross's Game Judge and he was going through uh, Requital. And I think one of my favorite lines from that is... Hello! Hello, son of a of a good mother. <laughs> I just... 
That is such a weird yet wholesome way to uh, address somebody. Yes. Hello, Andrew, son of a good mother. <laughs> what would it feel if somebody addressed you like that? Thank you, I, I would guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Well, on the subject of block of like speed runs, I'm glad that there are now videos archiving and going to the world record for speed speedrunners. Yeah. Oh, did you hear? Did you hear? Carl Jobs. He he turns out he isn't he isn't the white knight for speedrunning as we all thought. Cold Jobs uh, cheated in speedruns. What did he cheat on? Uh, on several games. He 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 decided to admit to to uh the fact that he cheated. So that way, you know, it wouldn't come out. Well, at least we really did something like that. So. <laughs> okay, so in, in the actual truth, uh, yes, he cheated. Uh, this was when he was like 14 and 6 or 16. Uh, it was for a Nintendo 64 magazine where they just had speed runs, uh, like times. Uh, he wanted a controller that they gave away to like one person each month who like made the best times or whatever but they didn't actually have any kind of uh uh legitimate you just had to send a letter saying oh i got this time yeah well you like i believe you had to send like screenshots of proof but they that's all it was like oh just had to show this like the time not the method of getting it so he realized that it's like wait these times are impossible these people must be using like in-game cheats to actually like you know invincibility or uh, you know one shot kill god mode that kind of stuff so he then uh basically turned on a bunch of cheats to get good times and at that point i'm like it's not really cheating if you're if you're playing in the same category as everyone else and this category is any percent with cheats <laughs> i'm guessing uh in game cheats golden eye yeah it's like yes i'd like to announce that i am Playing in a new category, I call it Game Shark Percent. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I mean, that, that could be under Meme Percent, which I am okay on. Yeah, like uh, he he knew it's like one of those things where it's like it's like yes, technicality that yes he was cheating and he he is someone that is very uh hard stance against cheating in speedruns so the fact that he used to cheat in speedruns but at the same time it's like well he was a kid at the point and other he people were cheating it. yeah the story is almost comical it, he he yes it is meant to be comical so it's a matter of Oh, I did it because I was cracking into the picture. Oh, I did it because I didn't want to lose my fame. It's like, oh no, I just didn't want to lose to a bunch of other cheaters. I wanted that. I wanted that special uh, Mad Cats controller. <laughs> exactly. He did it for the Mad Cats. <laughs> Which, given that they're out of business, that controller might be worth something. <laughs> <laughs> That actually could be worth something. Easily two hundred dollars, baby. <laughs> and it's still a pile of crap. Oh, but for real. Ugh. I 
Billy Mitchell. I used to look up to that guy. That yeah, was so yeah. Dude. God. He tried to sue Cartoon Network because this regular show did a parody of it. A very odd point here, too. No, there are no cheats. There's no cheats. We were making a joke, meow. Yeah, I ran into like I th yeah, I think I've run into Cheeto once, but yeah, I'm I'm just doing this legit. And honestly, Cheeto's cheats aren't really that cheap. They just I mean... double whatever. You know, like, double your aid capacity, double your wing. Yeah. I think the one that I, the only one I used was, I used to just have fun doing wishy-washy banjo. <laughs> uh, that, and I did enjoy DK mode, aka, you know, big head mode. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'd say, re re remember that when that was a thing for cheats, like, just in-game stuff that's, like, just random fun bullshit? Yeah, big head mode was like in almost every game. Yeah. Ugh. And cheats with like, uh, the Lego Star Wars games. Mwah. Yeah, I don't. They, again, this is on the, the. Oh, wait, you weren't there for that. But yeah, this is on the Switch, so you can't even, like, do that. Yeah. If somebody could get a game to run onto the Switch onto this, I will be impressed. I mean, considering it's an online thing and they probably, like, make sure to keep it updated so people can't cheat, that's probably not gonna happen. I know, but... Let's be honest, there's some pretty crazy shit people have done. Hi. Yeah, Pete, you can, you can mod Pokemon, um... <laughs> Uh, Legend of Arceus and, uh, uh, Sword and Shield. Of course, that's if you use base, you have to, uh, have, like, freaking um, modded Switch. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not exactly cheating. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have been using suspend, suspend points, but mostly just to, like, serve as an interstitial between when I'm just playing this game and not. I, I try to avoid abuse of safe- like, okay. I think the only time I've ever really done that a bunch is with, like, old school quarter muncher style arcade games. Where they're so... just absolutely bullshit. <laughs> So wait, the, they actually act like uh, emulator save states where it's like, you can just keep reloading from that one point. I, I thought it was like, oh, a suspend point, create a point so you can like close the game out and then when you load it back up, it, you know, starts from there and deletes it. No, it, it is like an emulator save state type thing where you just, you save where you are now and you can just pop back to it whenever you want. Uh, Not as fast as standard... Save state and quick, you know, quick save. Quick F1, work. F2, F1, F2, F1, F2. <laughs> yeah, not as good as that, but yeah. That that's that's how I got through. Oh, what game was it that I was? I think it was Mega Man. I was playing um, Mega Man game, and every time I was in a really hard place, so every time I made a little bit of progress, I'd be okay. Save state. <laughs> Which I, I honestly don't blame you for, because a lot of those old school games are kind of predicated on the idea of you just get incrementally a little bit better a little bit at a time, just constantly going over it until you win. Because, like, it um... Really, it helped me with NT of Battle Network, especially when I had to do one of those side quests where you have to get a specific ship from a specific enemy. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like... Um, you, you, like I'm just saying, like a part of it is like, you, you you do know it is like a thing of like when it comes to those old school games, that was something where it's like okay, you give a kid a single cart and they're expected to make that last for months on end. 
Yeah. Yep. Also combat uh, video game rental. That too. Anyway, this uh, this gamer is running out of energy. I'm gonna need to go recharge. So this was fun. This was fun. Shame no game this week, but uh, hey, you gotta help your mom, dude, and that yeah. that is always important. Yeah. Gives so, me a little extra time to hash out what I'm gonna do with my character. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> By the way, Argo, did you ever see Invincible? No, I don't Woo! really care about it. Yeah, fair. It was pretty good. I guess the only yes. thing you can really go for is maybe just look up all the fight scenes on YouTube. I'm sure somebody's made a compilation. I, or at I'm least the meme scenes. It's <laughs> not my style. Nah, nah, no, that makes sense. Uh, thank you for the, the tip, Meowx Delight. And this is probably going to be where I stop for now. Yep. And hey, my internet was a little better today, so I was able to, well, see most of it, so, win, yay, night. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much for watching, dear viewers, and do that. Th thanks again for, for, for hanging out, Argo. Yep, no ours.